Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. At least the water doesn't smell bad. <laughs> Try to find a spot that way. It's easier to get the canoe into the water. I'll paddle for an extra two tenths of a mile other than do what we're going to have to do to get this out. Agreed. Which way do we want to go? We're going to go straight up this creek. Okay. There's the huge advantage if you come in here and find a sign. Is it worth it to come in here for a Saturday? One whole day on a Saturday. We get here two hours before light and we don't leave until dark. Right. Because this isn't just an AM or a PM hunt. This is a, This is an all day if you're coming in. Yeah, you're coming in, you're gonna hunt here for the entire day. But I mean, look how steep it is there. But look at the distance in the woods. Yeah. And there's no way that we could pull it up there, but we gotta find a spot that's easier. <laughs> this could be really bad. Oh man. I don't know whether I want to open it or not. <laughs> oh. No body. That's good. Amazing deer trails coming in and out of this thick stuff. Lee and I were just saying there's hardly any hunting pressure over here. There's got to be some bruisers in here. Just found two rubs on like three and a half inch trees, and we've only walked 50 yards up into the woods. Pretty thick in there? Slightly. Yeah. Probably 200 yards, 250 yards from the boat. Half the time we had to bend down, but man, I tell you what, talk about some thick deer trails that are coming in and out of this stuff. It's just bad. tracks everywhere. And then it opens up out of this real thick stuff down near the creek bottom, and then it opens up here into woods so i think our plan today may change a little bit but we're going to go ahead and skirt the woods in these two valleys these three mountains that come down into a y and form this stream and go out into the lake and uh try and move along the edge of this thick stuff and find trails coming out and find sign from there holy crap look at that pine tree oh 
<laughs> That's amazing. Look at how many trunks there are to it. We couldn't get our arms around that. No. Four people couldn't. How many main trunks? Four. Holy crap. Pretty cool. We've been following this deer trail up the edge of this real sharp incline that goes down to the water. We found a spot down at the bottom of this where it's only about a 25 or 30 yard walk up from where we're gonna park the canoe um, to walk up the steep face to get up to the top of this ridge and then slowly we've been walking up this incline. But here's what we see right there. And we know for sure that this is gonna be a great funnel right here. So we've already marked two places to put some tree stands with our back facing the water with the west wind. So our scent blows right out over the water. So Lee and I have been down, walking down the edge of this transition between really thick cover and bedding and walking across the contour lines parallel to the contour lines following this trail. And we find this intersection, this other trail that's coming out of this thick bedding area. And then it goes ahead and goes behind us into hemlocks and out onto a ridge. So we just went ahead and picked a tree that's just downhill. It doesn't have a ton of cover, but it doesn't have many clearing lanes to shoot and it does have some hemlocks around it. So the deer's not gonna see until they're right in front of you and it's already too late. So we're walking along this trail and there's fresh deer tracks everywhere and this one's pretty normal size and then we find that one beside it i like that deer that's a big boy It's wild walking through the middle of Pennsylvania forest with all the thick stuff we found down by the canoe. And then we worked up through all those hemlocks and hardwood forests and up into the oak ridges. And we come out and the very edge of one of the creeks at a steep face, there's this field, totally surrounded by white pines. Nothing growing up in it but a couple of bushes. Pretty cool. I'm gonna see if we can find a place to put a tree stand around the edge of this. How'd you make out? Um, three more. I didn't find any rubs on that side. They were all mature pines. But I think this is a good oak to think about putting a tree stand in. There's a huge trail that comes out of the corner here. So this yeah. oak tree right here. Yep. Got open hardwoods behind us. And we got this field out here. And there's a great trail that's coming right out here. I think it's definitely the best place we have in this field to think about putting a stand. So I was talking to you guys about how I put cameras out in public property. Come up on the climbing stick a bit. And then I go ahead and put a stick or branch behind it to go ahead and bend it over to me. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think that'll work. And uh, just high enough that I think someone's probably not going to mess with it especially with having a cable around it
I think I ripped my pants. Gives you an indication of the setup I have right there to get that camera up a little bit higher. like that my entire life Think what? about getting in a canoe to go hunt when you said it i was like that's gonna be sweet be cool to see a bald eagle huck finn baby This morning, over three or three, give or take. Hike in, hike out. We got 5.4 right here on this second scout. Off that, so three and a half. But I didn't turn the track around until after we got out there. So we're probably close to four, huh? Little lunch, refuel. Well. I don't know what you guys think at home, but I think maybe I ought to move my truck after we just got done eating lunch and I didn't realize there was a tree over it. <laughs> maybe a little. Don't forget to turn your lights off this time. <laughs> Where this was just clear cut. And then see how that's more mature for us from there. Yep. And look at the old swamp go around. And went over this direction. Looks like there's been a clear cut there. A lot of edge. But this is what I like. Clear cut edge with all these fields right here. So I think we're going to find a lot of edge, a lot of transition areas, which hopefully we can see where the deer are getting funneled along the edge of those transition areas. Hey, deer track right there. Hey guys, Lee and I are back at it again. Uh, we got done with our morning scout. Uh, we actually had to use the canoe and get across uh, part of a lake, um, found five or six really solid places to hunt this morning and the best thing was, I mean, like zero human pressure. Uh, so that was kind of cool. I mean, we really didn't see any human sign at all. Uh, now we're going into an area on some other uh, state forest land in PA. We've got about five and a half miles we're gonna do right now on a hike uh, for our second scout today and uh, we'll see what we find. So uh, Lee and I are getting ready to get out of here and. Uh, we just showed you guys that tree over top of my truck. How do you like that gate? We think it's probably a, a big old maple that split right there and dropped over top of that at one time. So good thing I moved my vehicle. You ready, buddy? Yep. Okay, let's go. go. We just walked along the edge of this swamp and found a place that within about 100 yards, it was somewhere between 50 and 75 rubs, some old, some last year found a place in a little open area in between some real thick vegetation that we can put a tree stand and get shots towards the swamp about 20 yards away and 40 yards behind us. And then as we were walking to the top of the swamp, we found this fire cut, which we can use for an easy way to get into that tree stand without having to walk through a ton of woods to get in there. 
we were saying that during gun season, whew, sit along one of these edges right here, put a blind or something, and shoot a country mile, that's for sure. But at least at the same time, public land, probably dangerous as all hell. As we are sitting in this clearing taking a break, you can see what's called the sheared tree line. If you really take a look at these apple trees in front of us and the other small trees and shrubs at the edge, you'll see that all the vegetation's gone uh, probably about four feet up. And what that is, is with a high deer population, they eat all the vegetation within the height that they can reach. We've been walking now for about a mile and a half, two miles, and have seen zero oaks on the top of this ridge flat. So we're heading back now. We've got one place to check with some elevation changes on the way back to the truck, but thought that this hiking trail and all these hemlocks was pretty cool. It's amazing how dark it is in here, but hopefully it's going to make it a little easier. We're done eating cobwebs for the day after walking through all the hemlocks and the low beaches so now we can walk down this trail and hopefully head back so we can get in the truck and go find our campground. Okay we finished our second scout. Problem was the end of the second scout was rain. So much for 15% chance of rain. The other thing that sucked about this second scout was uh, we started about a half mile away from the truck at a big swamp. We found a million rubs. We found a great place to put a tree stand. Really enthusiastic, left that, and we found about that much that was worth putting a tree stand in in the rest of our four mile hike really kind of disappointing uh, there was absolutely zero oaks on top of this big flat and uh, there just wasn't any sign that was worth coming back to nope so we're gonna head back to the campground we're gonna set up our tent we're gonna take a shower and go find some place to eat get a couple of drinks get warm reevaluate our maps and our morning hike before we head home and uh, hopefully tomorrow morning we'll find as much sign as we did this morning. Okay, yep. we're out of here. Let's go. Cold beer, right? That's right. Cold beer. See ya. You know how we told you guys we left and it was raining? Guess what? <laughs> we came back from dinner, it's still raining. You don't see any fire. We're sitting on the awning in front of the tent, having a drink, talking and laughing, but no fire. Lee, you want fire? You have waterproof fire? No. That's right a lot. No fire. Cool. Okay. Night, boys. We'll see you in the morning. Backed up. We're heading back out for our final scout. What do you think our goal is today? Five or six places. Yeah. I think if we can get five or six, it's good. We're off. Third scout of the weekend. Final scout of the weekend. Everything's soaking wet, but we get to go home today and dry it out. We've had a good time. 
Well, and the gas properties too. It's expensive. Have as hell. really raised the price of all the leases. Yep. You know, all the farmers that used to let you on their land also aren't letting as many people on because so many people have taken advantage of it. Yeah. You know, it used to be when I first started duck hunting 25 years ago. You could knock on a farmer's door and they'd say, absolutely, just bring me a couple of ducks. Now, I mean, you almost have to know the farmer to get permission. There's yeah. very few people that let strangers on anymore. Mm -hmm. Look at the grouse. About four of them. They still there. They flew right up in the tree right in front of me. Mm -hmm. One did, the other one flew, but was behind the branch and the stem of the tree. Now, see all this mountain laurel along here? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I was watching on a couple guys that hunt PA is if you can find these big pockets of mountain laurel, they the deer will transition along the edge of these mountain laurel pockets, and they're not going to go through the middle of it. They're just very like rarely they're going to go through the middle of it because it's so thick. So what they'll do is if you can find where there's a huge pocket of it and you walk that transition on the edge of it like we were doing the clear cuts yesterday, you can often find those transition deer trails along that edge of the mountain wall. So we biked in as far as we're going to come in. We got a steep east facing ridge out there. We're going to head along the top of this ridge right here. We finally found one of the things we were looking for at elevation was mountain laurel and some pockets. And we found this deer trail, which is a transition right along the edge of this pocket. And then right behind Lee, right there, there's another one that's going along this transition. So we're going to see if we can find some areas that are intersections of trails that possibly we can set up for tree stands. And there's tons of oaks here, which is a bonus. So, uh, here's Lee and I, half hour into our morning hike, and a uh, lot of oaks, a lot of mountain laurel, really promising sign, tons of trails. We mark our first tree stand, and uh, Lee drops his backpack, takes about four steps towards the tree we're thinking about sitting in. I'm about six feet away from him, and all of a sudden I'm like, what is that sound? And as I say that, he gets stung and a swarm of bees starts chasing him. He's running through the forest looking like a damn orangutan. I'm following him, trying to swap bees off him. We get all the bees off of him. I go grab his backpack, come over, and then I start getting stung. So Lee and I are laughing. Well, we went about 200 yards away and found another tree that was pretty decent. And we're sitting here looking at this. There was his path running as the bees were chasing him all over the place. Not funny, but now we can laugh. Still hurts on both of us. <laughs> so Lee and I have finally started to figure this out where there's a lot of deer trails that skirt along the edge of the mountain laurel. Some go through it, but we found a place just looking back about 150 yards where there's a real steep face and there's like three or four trails that all merge together and come together as a funnel. So we marked that as a possible tree stand and now we're trying to work along this ridge to see if we can find some other transitions where the deer are walking along the edge of the thick mountain laurel. This is what happens when you leave the openings of the mountain laurel. You get caught where there's mountain laurel 360 degrees around you and no way out. Well there's a way out. So this is what Lee and I have been looking for as we're coming through all this laurel. Got ourselves on a little bit of wild goose chase where we couldn't get out of the laurel and now we're back to some openings and found an area where there's a huge trail coming out of there. There's a nice trail coming out of there and then we have this entire opening right here where there's a couple other trails that are coming in and out. So we're setting two tree stands that we're marking, one for that's going to be north-northwest wind and one that's going to be a southwest wind. 
So now Lee and I are trying to find ways out that are fairly easy to these couple of stands that we chose. And so far we've found these old logging roads um, that are coming right to all four of the stands so far that we've chosen. So now we're going to begin to um, work our way back along this steep face and see if we can find maybe one or two more stands on our way back to our bikes. We are done. Three scouts in two days. How many miles we do? A little over 14. 14 plus a mile and a half biking. Found plenty of good stands yesterday morning and plenty of good stands this morning, but yesterday afternoon was only one. How many stands we get? Seven the first day and then six today. 14 Seven. stands? Yep, right there. Yeah, so I think we're in pretty good shape with 14 stands. Some of those places that we're going to have the stand um, is only going to be a one-day hunt when we have to canoe in. We'll do that together sometime near Halloween on a, on a Saturday probably. The other places are places that we can come down. It's only an hour drive and either hunt a morning or an afternoon or actually come down for an entire day. So definitely successful. I think we were really lucky in the fact that we didn't get the forecasted 74% chance of rain today, but it was 15% chance of rain yesterday and we got hammered. Correct. You know. So that's it. We're done with our PA scout. We're going to head home. We're going to get all this stuff ironed out and figure out how to mark locations of entry points for these stands and clean up the maps and we'll be ready for PA hunting season to come out here and get in the woods and do some archery hunt. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Hey, it was fun. Yeah. See ya. Except for the beasting. Except for the beasting. That's right. Bye. <laughs>